Hi! I was going to put a game here, but I don't have one ready quite yet, so I figured it might make sense to uh, give an update on my DancePad project uh, for now instead, because it's been kind of consuming like all of my free time, and I haven't talked about it here very much, so let me just share what I've been up to and what I've done so far. Um, so, I've spent a bunch of time in a workshop that is uh, owned by a family friend, and um, I've cut a whole bunch of wood and metal, and basically gotten most, almost all of the pieces uh, that I think I need for the pad together. Later today, I'm planning to do a test assembly of everything, just to see how well it fits together, what I need to tweak, and what parts I might still be missing. I know of two... Two specific parts that I absolutely need that I haven't figured out yet, but everything else I think I actually have. So let me show you a few things. So I have my arrow panels with decals applied now. At least I've done half of them. Um, they turned out pretty good. It was kind of weird. After I, when I initially applied the, boy, it is, it is hard to figure out how to, how to sit and hold things. So they look like that. Uh, they're just white on the back. Um, so when I initially applied these decals, um, they didn't go on super cleanly for some reason. I don't know how well you can see, like there's a little blemish up here. Uh, that's one of the only remaining ones. When I first put this on, it was like super dirty. There were these white spots all over it, but it kind of worked itself out over time, I guess. So the, the way I applied these was, um, the recommendation I saw was to spray soapy water on the surface then stick the thing on, then sort of run along it with a credit card and squeegee off all the water so that it gets nice and flat. And it came out pretty flat. I got almost all the bubbles out. But like initially after I did that, it looked kind of super terrible, but after just sitting for a few days, it kind of fixed itself up. So I guess the soapy water kind of dried and found its way out. So it looks a lot better now. Um, I have an enormous amount of video footage of all stages of construction of this thing. I have it for applying the decals, I have it for cutting the wood. Let me show you some of these wooden pieces. Um, let's... So a whole lot of two by threes. I think I bought, let's see, I bought 12 and used 10 so far, and I might use the, the other two of uh, eight, eight foot lengths of them. Um, so I have, these are the shortest pieces of those. There's a whole bunch of these that go across uh, and support the whole pad. Let's see. I did not plan for this very well. <laughs> Perhaps I should... Yeah, okay, so I can switch here. Um, this schematic should look familiar. It is much more complete now. So let me just start from the bottom and work my way up. I'll get back to showing the, the actual parts in a moment. Uh, so base plate here. Um, imagine for the player two pad, this is just sort of mirrored horizontally over on the side here. Uh, I've only I've only bothered to put the schematic for the player one pad here because it, it's the same. It's just mirrored um, for the other one. Uh, there are some minor differences, but it's it's not a big deal to. Oh, sorry. Uh, ignore that. <laughs> just had to clear my throat. Um, right. So the frame here. So this piece that I'm showing here is. Uh, so it, yeah, it goes. It stands up like this against the base plate, and it's all of these. So I have all of those cut down to the appropriate size. I have written on here 7.75 inches. Um, and I have these cut. Uh, those are much larger, so I didn't want to bring them up here just to show them, but they're there. Uh, you'll see them in future building videos, definitely. Uh, so this little corner is a little trickier. So I have these here. Uh, they are cut. They work. Um, they work, I say. I haven't put them into the pad yet. Uh, one of them is a little bit messy just because the, uh, the miter saw that I was using for it kind of had a, had a, uh, a kick out or whatever you call it right here and just jerked it out of the way because I didn't have it clamped down well enough. Um, and yeah, but this, this piece is almost certainly still usable. Uh, this doesn't need to be like super perfectly flush against here because it's not like this is an exposed part or anything. Uh, so, right, I'm not there yet. Um, oh man, sorry again, my throat is just not cooperating right now. <laughs> uh, right, so that's the frame. Um, those are all just two by threes, 
holding everything up. Uh, I planned out my screws. Uh, these are all the positions that those are going to go. That's how they fasten to the base plate. I have not yet figured out how I'm going to drill those holes. Because ideally I want to drill up through the base plate into the 2x3s and put in the wood screws that way. Um, but I would have to elevate it and drill in from the bottom or somehow get those positioned perfectly and flip the whole thing over and then drill from the top. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I mean, another possibility would be to go in from the from the top down and just go all the way through. I don't have a drill bit long enough for that. I guess I could get one. So those are options. Um, that's a thing I have yet to figure out. I've just been concerning myself with cutting the large pieces and making sure I have all of those. And the next stage is assembly and fasteners. And then electronics are going to be their own sort of thing too. Um, anyway, so around these edges are pieces of plywood. The same, the same one that goes into the base. It's a quarter inch thick, which is actually 0 0.706 inches. Uh, okay, I don't have the piece that I want to show here, but let's just pretend this is... Oh, actually, yes I do. Here we go. Um, so I brought the the other the corner that goes here. Um, so it looks like that has corner cutouts, um, and yeah, it's it's this thick. So all that goes around the the edge um, and keeps everything looking nice, I guess. Uh, so those are going to be painted. I was thinking of wrapping them in metal all the way around, but that's a little too much metal working. It's, it's really a pain. I'll talk about the metal in a moment. Man, <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Uh, but I'm just going to paint those red, uh, you know, sand them down, make them as nice as they can be, and those will be the outside edge of the pad. Um, right, planned out the screws for those, just so that I knew how many I needed to buy. Um, wire channels, right. So electronics are going inside this thing. I need to cut a hole here, one here. And a bunch along there to run the wires the way they need to go. Wires are like that. Uh, I don't know how much sense. Let's see how do I do this. I don't know how much sense is this. This is going to make. But basically, like I have my USB interface here. It connects to a USB port on the outside, so that's how this connects to the computer. There's an interconnect here that goes to the player two pad. Um, so that one is just uh, so it's over here on this side and. Um, this connects to everything in a mirror image of this, basically. Um, so this has wires going to the up, left, down, oh, whoa, <laughs> uh, down at right arrows. Um, all these markings are just what connections go where, basically. Um, so I think I have that basically figured out. I'm just going to have to do it. <laughs> uh, those, of course, connect to the, the pressure sensors and LEDs if I end up putting any in the, uh, in the center to light up the panels. I haven't, that's another piece of the puzzle I haven't worked out yet. Um, right, so I should have brought this. Let me go get it, actually. All right, here's the thing. Ugh. So this was made by a machine shop, kind of a big, complicated uh, bracket sort of thing. It's also fairly heavy. <clears throat> need to handle this carefully so I don't drop it on something expensive. Um, so the purpose of this piece is to attach to the bar that I have back here. This is a real pump it up bar. Uh, it does not, ooh, <laughs> does not fit on camera, but yeah, this goes in the back. Um, I would demonstrate, but there's not quite enough space to do it here. But yeah, so these two posts, it just slides down onto those, and then this is anchored <clears throat> onto the base and into the frame so that that holds the bars up. Other machine shop parts, while I'm on the topic, um, I have these uh, fancy triangle bracket holders. They're pretty complicated. This was the most expensive piece because I needed 32 of them, and they're... One plate on top, one plate on the bottom, welded to an L shape in the middle with two tapped holes and then two untapped holes through here. It's a, it's a complicated piece. It is in the schematic, uh, this one. Um, I will explain what they do in a moment. Um, I also have sensor brackets here. So these are fairly simple, just little L-shaped things with three holes in them. Uh, the purpose of these is to sit on top of the pressure sensors, which I don't have with me, but I showed them in the uh, first video for this. 
Uh, they can move, freely move up and down. They apply pressure to the uh, center of it and basically make the whole thing work. <laughs> uh, one other piece here is the frame joint bracket. Um, this goes in between pads. Uh, it would sit right about here on the P1 pad and then connect to the P2 pad over here. There's also another one on the front. Uh, so that holds them together so they don't just uh, drift apart. Um, so those are all the machined parts. Um, right, so back to the schematic. Uh, where was I? Um, so let me just hide the wires since they're kind of distracting. And the screws since they don't need to be there. Oops, not that. <laughs> all right, sure. So, uh, yeah, you can stay. So the, f the layer I just toggled on was um, basically the, the five stationary panels. Uh, this is not what it's going to look like because there will be metal on it, but anyway, um, I'll talk about that in a second. Those uh, go here, like that, and they need to be elevated just a little bit to be at the same level as the arrows because there's a very specific amount of height um, that's required for these because there's sensors, sensor brackets, arrow panels, and uh, triangle brackets on top. There's basically no flexibility in... Um, you know, unless I trim down the wood on the inside of the frame or something, there's no flexibility in how much height uh, those take up. So um, to make the stationary panels match that height, I'm going to use these little thin strips of plywood. These I was lucky enough that I was able to find plywood of just about the right thickness. I didn't think I would be able to, and I'd have to, like, trim down two by threes to this thickness or something, and that would have been kind of a nightmare. Um, so fortunately, I didn't. So the idea is that these will go on, let's see if I can do this appropriately. These will go on in a pattern something like that. Uh, I didn't do the best job of this, but yeah, like on the bottom of them. Um, they'll hold these up and give it just that little extra bit of height uh, so that it'll be at the appropriate level to match all my measurements. Um, and what else? So right, the panels. Uh, a couple more of those to hold up the back and front covers because there's some extra space down here and up here that uh, needs to be filled. Oops, I got ahead of myself. Uh, back and front covers go on. Like these have, yeah, these have holes cut out of them to accommodate for the bars. Which I've done here. So this is uh, the piece that I have highlighted now. That's the centerpiece. Uh, <laughs> this is tough to do. Uh, yeah, cutting these holes was an interesting process because I did it after I had already made the cut down here. It might have been smarter to do it before. The problem is if I had done, if I had cut the holes first, then the width of the saw blade would have been taken out of them, so it wouldn't be a perfect circle when these are when these are put together like this. Um, and I didn't want that, so I just found a way to to clamp two of these together and cut right into uh, into there with a circular saw drill bit. All this stuff I'm describing uh, has a whole bunch of video footage that I've stored up for it, which I'll be releasing at some point, um, hopefully soonish. Um, I didn't have time today to edit it down and include in this, but yeah, I have, have a whole bunch of that. That's definitely coming soon. Um, right, so at this point, that's most of the frame of the pad. Uh, now this just get, get, gets into the electronics. That's where the sensor brackets go. That's a piece that is still kind of a mystery. <laughs> I need to figure out how much height, how tall these need to be uh, when I do a test assembly of the pad uh, before I can do anything about them. That's that's one of the two pieces that I don't currently have. The other one being LEDs for the center of the panels. Other than that, I think I actually have everything. Arrow panels go like that. I already showed them. And... Right, triangle brackets go on top and screw into the these guys, the triangle bracket mounts, and hold the panels down. Uh, then sheet metal goes on top. So I have pieces of sheet metal cut to matching shapes for the, uh, the wood that I had there. 
let's see how well this fits together, <laughs> if I've gotten all my measurements right. Uh, I have, but it doesn't actually fit together because... Okay, so this is accommodating something else on the bottom, so it, it sticks out a little bit. Ooh, that sticks out less than I thought it should, would. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I may have found a minor problem. Okay, well, I'll improvise something there. Maybe the, the edge here will just... We'll just uh, have to stick out and be a little more wood than I predicted. All right, that's fine. Something to tweak for next time if I <laughs> if I build another one of these. <laughs> uh. Right. Um, yeah, because if I look here, you can actually see that the metal, yeah, the metal comes out a little bit farther than the um, the uh, the panel itself. Uh, huh. Yeah, okay, I see what I've done there. <laughs> uh, all these little fine details. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn all of the fine details that I've gotten slightly wrong as soon as I do a test assembly of this. Um, I think what I might do is get a video of the test assembly. Um, maybe since since this is good timing, maybe I'll just replace this time slot with a um, an episodic uh, building video series for this because I'm kind of right at the tail end of it. And um, it's there's enough footage that it's going to need to be episodic unless I want to upload like a three hour video of all the building process, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so maybe I'll do that or maybe I'll do something else. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I just wanted to do this now. Um, right. Yeah. Metal goes on top. Uh, metal screws. Got those all planned out. I have all the screws that need to go in them. And then the bar goes on top. And that's the entire pad. So... Uh, Right, um, these panels here, they're complicated. So right, I have a stationary panel here. This is 10.65 uh, inches. Um, over here, I have a test that I did of wrapping one of those in metal. Now, I just cut this out of terrible plywood I had around that's old and has been out in the rain, and, like, it's it's kind of worthless. But it was good enough for this test. Um, so, this piece of metal... This is the actual piece of metal that's going to be going around this panel, or one like it. Um, you can see that it sticks out the sides a little bit. So the idea being that it would wrap around on every edge um, so that the top is all plated and it also goes down the sides a bit. So I've tried to do that here um, and kind of had a bit of a... it, it, it was semi-successful. Um, I learned all the things not to do. That was the whole point of doing this, so that I could fail in all the important ways so I could get it right for the real one. Um, let's see, so I, my approach here was to cut out the corners, then bend this down with a rubber mallet just to get it as flush as it could yet. The problem with that is that metal doesn't want to bend... If I want to make a 90 degree bend in metal, I need more than a 90 degree angle, because it needs to bend slightly past the point um, you want it to bend to, because it springs back just a little bit. So I'm going to need to make some sort of jig for bending these over. Because as it is, they stick out just that little bit. It is really hard to hold this at an angle where you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, like, this angle here is, is slightly out this way. And there's no way to get it perfect just with a square piece. I can take this off and just look at the metal by itself. Um, that still doesn't help much. Yeah. I also did a test. Um, let's see. <laughs> Other things I learned about this. Uh, where's that thing? This is why I use a rubber mallet, because this was with a normal hammer. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a, there's a mark there from using a normal hammer on it. Um, I tried using a countersink bit on my drill um, so that I could get the screw all the way flush with this. That worked fine. Just wanted to make sure I understood what was happening with that. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is like all kinds of bent out right here. Hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is this is trash. This was just for practice, basically. 
so yeah, that's the uh, the state of my my process here. Uh, so for for planning out the pieces to um, to cut and how that would all work and how much material I needed to buy, what I did was I copied all of um, so this Inkscape document has real world dimensions in it. That's a that's a grid of inches, so I can measure everything that I need to. Um, I copied all the pieces that I knew I would need to build out of this and put them together into stuff like, that wants to open on the wrong display for some reason, stuff like this. Um, so these are the base plates. Those were a little too big to bring up here. Um, this is the stationary panel I was just showing you. So basically like this document is the size of a sheet of plywood that I would buy at a hardware store. And this is how I would cut it. So I knew that I needed two sheets. Um, whoa. There's a little bit of waste because all this space down here was unused, but th this this did not fit at all in one sheet. So like this is all of the pieces I cut out. I showed this and this. Um, that's what goes on the edge. I showed one of these with the with the diagonal edge. Um, so then I did the same thing for two by threes. Um, two by threes just be instead of two by fours, just because they fit better. Um, I'm trying to roughly match arcade pad dimensions with this. Um, so some of the stuff I, I've done is basically just for authenticity or mimicry or whatever you want to call it. Oh, I didn't bring one of these pieces. These are kind of interesting. These are, these actually have an extra cutout in them uh, so that, um, the purpose of that is to go under here uh, because I couldn't have this at the full height of those for various reasons. Um, so basically that part of the frame goes underneath this. This anchors to it, and um, yeah, and everything should work there. Uh, right, so basically this told me I needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I needed ten two by threes. That's exactly how many I used. I bought twelve in case I screwed up and needed more, uh, but I didn't. So. This map worked out correctly. Um, then I did the same thing for uh, the sheet metal here. Well, that's a that's a simple one. Um, just need to cut that uh, into eight squares. The other one is more complicated. So working with this metal stuff, <laughs> I used a, a pair of shears that were. Uh, it took so much effort to to squeeze and actually cut everything, but I got it all done. Uh, I have footage of that. It's like the most boring footage ever because just slowly using this big pair of metal scissors to go along and cut through this sheet, but it's there. <laughs> um, so I have all these pieces done. Uh, and then, right, the last one was for um, the thinner plywood. All these little pieces that uh, are the panel risers and elevate the, the thing by just that little bit. And I needed a couple of others for... Um, yeah, this, this particular plywood comes in smaller squares, so I needed two of those small squares to make all the stuff I uh, was going to make with it. So that was all the materials for stuff that I was building myself. The things I sent off to the machine shop for fabrication, yeah, so I showed all these pieces. Now I can show how I specified them. Um, so yeah, I drew this thing, the triangle bracket mount, this guy. Um, is specified like this. I have all the dimensions here in great detail um, and basically passed this off to a local machine shop um, and they knew how to take those things and turn it into the actual part. This is the one for the handle joint bracket that I showed here. Oh right, <laughs> I don't have the computers on this, uh, uh, the computers, well, I don't have the photos on this computer. Um, but that was, these were a couple of photos of what a real one of these looks like in an arcade machine, just to, just for comparison. Then the frame joint bracket, that's a real simple one. Um, that still had to be specified, just like everything else. And the sensor bracket, same sort of deal. So yeah, that's how all those worked. Uh, I had some photos for this one too. Yeah, just ignore that. Yeah, so anyway, um, that is the state that I'm at with these pads. I have a whole bunch of pieces in a pile in my living room uh, that are basically, as far as I can tell, everything that I'm going to need, minus like one or two little things. Whoa, I have a lot of documents open right now. Close, close. Hey, close? Inkscape <laughs> slowing down a bit. This is a lot of vectors to render. Um... 
close, close, close. <laughs> uh, I don't save because I toggle the grid. It doesn't matter. And then right back to the pad. Um, <laughs> that took so long that I forgot what I wanted to show here. <laughs> Oops. Oh, well. Um, right, right. The, uh, the one thing, the corner stoppers here. Whoa. Corner stoppers, which look really weird without everything else there. Uh, the purpose of those is to elevate the arrow panels uh, just a little bit so that they um, so that they're not just sitting directly on the sensor brackets and nothing else so that gives them them another thing to sit on in the corners um, they're supposed to have a little bit of elasticity so that they can move up and down just slightly um, basically it's it's a fine adjustment so that the sensors get just enough pressure on them but not too much <laughs> so that's going to take a lot of work and tweaking to figure out um, how to all make work uh, yeah but that'll be fun um, that'll happen when I assemble the thing all right so this is basically yeah, okay well sure this can be episode one of the dance pad building pretty much uh, this is all my schematics this is what I've done with them uh, coming episodes are going to be, I'll, I'll put together the footage that I've taken of cutting all the wood and the metal and, um, all the various just little tasks that I had to do to put the things together. Um, at the same time, I'll be still just working on this on my own and capturing as much of the process as I can. Uh, like the test assembly will be a video uh, of its own or something like that. I don't know. Uh, putting all the screws in is going to be a very long, complicated process. And then wiring up the electronics will be its own thing. And then, basically, the thing will be done. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. All right, cool. Um, so, yeah, next time I'll include some of the, the footage for, for cutting the stuff. And we'll go from there and see how far I get. <laughs> so I'll see you then.